What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of Collection Commentary. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this customized Kaiser Kyre, which is a heck of a knife. Um, I bought this knife with the intent of having it customized. I bought the, bought the um, plain titanium version. There is a like bluish-green uh, pre-anodized version that Kaiser offers, but I wanted something in purple that had uh, these polished ridges. Um, and so that's what made me pick this knife up. Now, I will say real quick, I did wipe this knife down before this video so that I could show it off to you, as it really uh, it does not take fingerprints very well, as you can kind of see as I've just stuck my hand on there. Um, it really clouds up the anodization and makes it uh, look a little bit worn. So um, I wanted to get that nice, beautiful sheen on video. You can see it's got a gorgeous shine to it, um, and I just absolutely love the way that it turned out in this purple. Obviously, we did the clip in pink. Um, and what attracted me to the knife was just the design aesthetic. So you can see um, it has kind of a, almost like a shark-like aesthetic to it. Um, it has this really neat, uh, continuous arc all the way through the spine of the knife. And I just really liked that. I liked how it was one continuous flowing arc, um, all seemingly at the same degree throughout. So um, I really liked that kind of symmetrical uh, uh, arch to the knife. I thought it was really neat. Um, and of course, I really like the polished ridges as well. That was a big selling point for me um, in terms of doing the customization was being able to shine those up. Um, so I think that's a really uh, neat feature of the knife. Something else that we did was a light stone wash to the blade. Um, might not be the easiest thing to see, but uh, the blade does come in, I believe it was like a satin finish. Might not have even been satin. Um, I'm having difficulty remembering, honestly. I bought the knife, pulled it out of the package just to make sure everything was okay, and then immediately shipped it off to have it customized. Um, so a couple of thoughts about the knife. It is a little bit tinky when you close it. Um, it is only a $200 knife, um, so you're not going to get some of those super satisfying um, actions that you might get from knives that are in a higher price point. Um, but this one, it's it's good, it's just not great. Um, and so it does have a little bit of that tinkiness. You can hear it when you close it up. Um, it's just not super solid. Um, and that's another thing about the knife is it kind of feels kind of flimsy. The clip is a little bit flimsy. Um, it's, I don't know if you can hear the vibration. Maybe not, but um, it's uh, it's really thinned out in this section here, which is great for giving room for your um, for the material on your pants. But it just really leaves something to be desired for solidity. Um, and the tension on it, it's only resting up against one of these little ridges. I'm not going to really be able to show you that, but um, it makes for the tension to be a little bit vibrate-y. Um, and so. I don't know. I read about some people complaining about the clip. I think it works just fine, um, but that is something to note that it just doesn't have the same um, quality that you might get from like a milled clip or something like that, even though it is titanium. Um, I will say I really dislike the flipper tab on this knife. Um, it's not super effective. You can't light switch the knife at all, really. Um, I guess if you do it really hard, you can get, manage to get it out, um, but especially not if you're vertical. Uh, gravity is just too much. Um, and then even if you push button the knife, if you do it well, you get a pretty decent deployment. Nothing crazy. Pretty decent. Um, but again, if you don't give it that much effort and you just kind of naturally push button, you only get lock up about, you know, 30, maybe 50% of the time, depending on how hard you're pushing. So uh, the knife does do a lot better with a bit of a wrist flick, which is not something I'm super fond of on a flipper, you know what I mean? I, I understand uh, being having a benefit of wrist flicking on my Sequoia. You know, it does deploy just with the thumb stud, but a wrist flick is going to give it a really solid um, smack into the uh, stop pin, whereas this uh, kind of requires it if you're going to get the really solid deployment every time. Um, now, you can use this hole here for uh, finger deployment. You can either use your thumb and kind of manually open the knife and bring it around. Um, you can flick it open as well with your thumb. Um, and then you can get your uh, middle finger in the back here as well. You can kind of manually pull it out. Oh, I'm going to hit the desk there. 
Um, and you really have to flick your wrist um, to get it out with your middle finger. Um, it's kind of hard for me to do. I don't usually have as much trouble with it as I just did there um, in displaying that. That's just because I have really close quarters. Um, but it definitely requires a bit of a wrist flick to get it out with that middle finger. Um, so that's something that's I'm not super satisfied with on the knife. It, it requires, it, it is not effortless deployment every single time as it would be on some of uh, some of my more expensive knives. So again, it's not a huge deal. Um, the knife doesn't cost all that much. Um, now there is no really super ergonomic way to hold this knife. Um, if you hold it in the saber grip, uh, your you, this is the natural way I'd be holding it. And you can kind of see it's at an angle. Um, it, it is not straight as uh, it appears here. And that's because of the curvature of the knife. It's just the way it kind of falls into the hand. Um, let's see here, where's the 604? So you can see the 604 kind of naturally falls in the hand through uh, this line right here this line in your hand, and that's kind of where your hand naturally closes up. It's kind of the center of where your hand closes up, and that's right where the 604 kind of wants to sit. Whereas with the uh, Kyer, you can see because of the curvature, it's actually in this first crux, really, of the hand. And so when you close it up, it's getting caught in this first crux, and then as you get to the middle crux, it's kind of folding in on itself. It's kind of getting twisted into this awkward angle um, because the knife is actually sitting much further up in your hand as opposed to down here where you might actually want it. And if you hold it down here, then you have all this space that's not being, um, doesn't give you a very sturdy feel. So this does not feel super great or natural either. Um, it has an okay murder grip. Uh, the clip does fall away pretty well. So I do uh, support that grip. But um, the pinch grip will work just fine. You have this excellent jimping, which is going to help you out there. But again, because of this long curvature, you are going to be hitting the butt of your knife um, as you go through that slicing motion. So don't expect to be using this for too much food prep. Though it does have a very, um, very tall flat grind. Um, and so the blade stock is kind of thick. Um, but it's not too, too thick just because of this large surface area you have, kind of similar to um, my Decepticon video, which I'll link to here. You can kind of go see a similar blade to this in terms of the shape and size and the consideration of the grind. So this is definitely gonna make a good slicer um, as long as you're not using it up against a cutting board. Um, now going back to this jimping, I really like this from both a design perspective and a functionality perspective. Um, it does provide a lot of purchase if you do have your knife, or sorry, if you do have your thumb that far up on the blade. Um, this is really good. It's uh, it's smoothed out enough that it doesn't really make it hot. Um, you can kind of rub your finger against it and it feels just fine. Um, but it is deep enough and sharp enough that it does give you solid purchase. Now, beyond that, I like that um, if you kind of consider this hole to look like an eye, uh, the jimping looks a little bit like a furrowed brow. And it really gives the knife that continuous aggressive look that um, I really like it for. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say about this one, guys. I really just wanted to show it off. I finally got it back from being customized. Um, and, you know, this is not going to be one of the knives that absolutely blows your freaking mind. Because, again, it is a $200 production knife. Um, and so there are features about it that definitely reflect that price point. Um, and I'm going to be a little bit more excited about some of the more expensive knives in my collection, which have their own issues to speak of as well. Um... But this one, I just really wanted to see it in purple. I thought it would be super cool. It turned out exactly how I thought it would, um, except it does really have these, excuse me, it does really have these uh, fingerprint issues. But that's something that, you know, you're going to experience on any knife with a lot of anodization. So not too big of a flaw. Um, I definitely recommend picking this one up if you are interested in something that's a little bit unique um, and you're still kind of playing around in that lower price bracket. Um, Kaiser makes a lot of great knives. I've loved all of the knives that I've had from them. This is probably my least favorite strictly in terms of functionality. Um, all the other Kaisers that I've held have flipped a lot better than this. So this has definitely the weakest detent, um, and, and the worst action just in terms of success rate, um, and ease of deployment, uh, compared to some of the other Kaisers I've handled. But this one is certainly the most unique in terms of design aesthetic. Um, and I definitely recommend the plain tie version being a great, uh, platform for customization. Uh, this just totally seemed 
right out of the box to be perfect for it. I will say that um, it does not say anywhere that this that the frame is PVD coated, um, but the gentleman who I sent this out for customization to uh, said that it was, and so that ended up delaying the customization process because we had to unexpectedly uh, clear off that PVD coating. So just know that if you do buy it with the intention of getting it customized to let the person know that it is PVD coated, you will not just be able to anodize the thing right out of the box. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. I have a lot of other great knives coming up very soon. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see future videos, please subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.